Welcome back to First Year Undergraduate Microeconomics. The topic is welfare economics. In particular, we've been looking at how to measure the gains from trade. We've been looking at the benefits to the buyer. We've been looking at the benefits to the seller. In other words, we've been looking at the gains to the buyer, which is called consumer surplus, and the gains to the seller, which is called producer surplus. So let me remind you where we've got up to. We know that the consumer surplus is the buyer's share of the gains from trade, and it's the difference between what buyers would have been willing to pay and what they actually have to pay. And we've worked out how to work out consumer surplus. It's simply the area under the demand curve, above the price that buyers pay, up to the quantity that they purchase. We know that producer surplus is the seller's gains from trade. It's the difference between the, what the sellers receive and the total opportunity cost of what they sell. And we know how to work that out. It's the area under the price sellers receive, above the supply curve, up to the quantity that they actually sell. We've had a running example of Sarah, who's been buying apples, Anji, who's been selling apples. Let's now put them together and work out what are the total gains from trade to Sarah and Anji if they meet in the marketplace. So let's put Sarah and Anji together. We have dollars on the vertical axis. We have quantity of apples on the horizontal axis. We have Anji's supply curve for apples. That's the upward sloping red line on our diagram. And we have Sarah's demand curve for apples. That's the downward sloping blue line on our diagram. Now we expect that the price will be set where Angie's supply curve and Sarah's demand curve intersect. But that's not quite as simple as normal on our diagram here because these curves overlap for a region. The quantity may be two apples, but for any price, a dollar ten or less per apple, and a dollar or greater per apple, Sarah is going to want to buy two apples, and Angie is going to want to sell two apples. So the market price could be any price between one dollar and a dollar and ten. Any of those prices will mean that the amount of apples that Angie would like to supply and the amount of apples that Sarah would like to buy will be the same. There'll be two dollars, so we'll be at an equilibrium. Let's pick one of those prices. Let's suppose that the market price ends up being one dollar per apple. What is Sarah's consumer surplus? Well, at a price of one dollar per apple, Sarah's going to want to buy two apples and she will be able to buy two apples. And her consumer surplus will be the area under her demand curve, above the price that she pays, up to the quantity of apples she purchases. And that's simply the shaded area on our diagram here. So Sarah's consumer surplus is going to be the yellow shaded area, and that's going to be equal to $1.20. Why? Well, on the first apple that Sarah buys, she would be willing to pay $2. She only pays $1. Her surplus is $1. On the second apple that she buys, she'd be willing to pay $1.20. She only has to pay $1, so she gets surplus of $0.20. Cents. So a surplus of $1 plus $0.20 cents on her two apples gives her consumer surplus of $1.20. What about for Angie's producer surplus? Well, remember the definition. Her producer surplus, her gains from trade, will be the area under the price that Angie receives, above her supply curve, up to the quantity of apples that she sells. She would like to sell two apples at a price of a dollar, and she is able to sell two apples at a price of a dollar. Why? Because Sarah would like to buy those apples. So, Angie's producer surplus is given by the blue shaded area on this diagram. It's equal to 70 cents. Apologies for the mistake on the slide. Why is it equal to 70 cents? Well, on her first apple that she sells, she sells it for a dollar. She has an opportunity cost of 50 cents. So her gain from trade on that first apple is 50 cents. On the second apple that she sells, she sells it for a dollar. Her opportunity cost is 80 cents. So she has a gain from trade on that second apple of 20 cents. 50 cents 
plus 20 cents is a 70 cents gains from trade per producer surplus from selling apples. So what are the total gains from trade? Well, we have Sarah's consumer surplus of $1.20, the orange shaded area. We have producer surplus of 70 cents, that's the blue shaded area. We don't have any government revenue and we don't have any government expenditure, so we can ignore that. And we don't have anyone else outside this market who is affected by Sarah and Angie's transactions, so we can ignore external effects. So that means the total surplus is simply the sum of the consumer and the producer surplus. So the total social surplus is simply a dollar twenty plus seventy. That's a dollar ninety. So the total gains from trade or the total social surplus is a dollar ninety. The orange plus the blue shaded area. That tells us in dollar terms how much better off Angie and Sarah are by being able to trade with each other. Let's now move from individuals though to the market. Here we represent the market for apples. Dollars on the vertical axis, quantity on the horizontal axis. We have our market supply curve, we have our market demand curve. An equilibrium will be a market price of a dollar where buyers would like to buy four tons of apples per day and where sellers would like to sell four tons of apples per day. But how do we measure total gains from trade? Or in other words, how do we measure the increase in wealth to society from having the transactions occur in the Apple market. Well, we know that the consumer surplus generated by these trades is the area under the market demand curve, above the market equilibrium price, up to the quantity of apples traded. We know the consumer surplus is the yellow shaded area on our diagram. And we know that producer surplus is the area under the market price, above the market supply curve, up to the quantity of apples actually sold. So we know that total producer surplus in this market is simply the blue shaded area on our diagram. How do we get the total surplus generated by this market? Well, it's the total consumer surplus plus the total producer surplus, and that gives us the total surplus generated by this equitable market. It's the entire shaded area, the orange plus the blue shaded area. That's our total economic surplus from the Apple market in our example. And if you wanted to, you could work out the size of this total surplus triangle. You could work out the total benefits to the economy of having people buy and sell apples every day. Notice that we've now come a full circuit. We started off with Tom and Becky and we looked for their gains from trade from producing and selling tomatoes and potatoes. We then noted that they only got gains from trade if the price was right. So we asked where the prices come from and we used the tools of demand and supply to work out our prediction, our equilibrium price. But now we've used demand and supply to work out what the gains from trade are in our Apple market. The next step is to ask how do those gains from trade change when we introduce government policy. But that's for next time. Thanks.